Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God whose steadfast love is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading is from the book of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He answered them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, son, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome to this week's YouTube devotional. We thank you for joining us today and we pray that God is with you and with all in our world, especially those in need. I begin today with a story. It's a true story about a psychologist named Stanley Milgram and the experiment that he devised to test how far we humans will go when pushed by an authority figure to do something that crosses an ethical line. Milgram assumed that most people would push back against an authority figure in short order. Let me tell you about the experiment. Here's the first thing that he did. He, well, he recruited some volunteers from the area. Some of them were Yale students, where he studied and where he taught, and others were residents of New Haven, Connecticut. So he gathered his um, volunteers, and he told them that they would be applying electric shocks to other participants in another room, according to how they answered questions. The idea was to see if they could learn more by doing this. Now, some of the assistants were in on the experiment, but these assistants looked like they were just ordinary pe people attached to some wires to what the volunteers thought was an electric contraption that could give these people electric shocks. The volunteers could see them on the other side of the window, but they did not know them. Again, these volunteers thought that the people attached to the wires on the other side of the window were really shocked when they, did, when they pushed a button but they did not realize that they were actors only pretending to be shocked. So Milgram began his experiment, and depending on how those actors answered the questions, 
The volunteers were then told to apply what they thought were shocks to the actors when they answered incorrectly. As the experiment proceeded, the subjects were told to apply higher doses of electric shocks and therefore more and more pain. The experiment began to become a horrible sight. People whom they did not know and against whom they had no grievance seemed to be suffering greatly. Some of the actors pounded on the glass and even complained of heart pain. Even so, most subjects followed Milgram's instructions and continued to apply what they thought were greater and greater shocks until even some of the, appeared, the participants on the other side of the class, a glass appeared to die. And what may be even more remarkable is that those who did not proceed all the way to an apparent killing of a fellow human, they left without inquiring about the health of their, the other participants. The startling and unsettling conclusion that Milgram and others have come to is that we humans are remarkably receptive to obeying new rules in a new setting. Most people are surprisingly willing to harm and even kill others in the service of some new purpose if they are so instructed by a new authority and don't have much time to process it first. Milgram was very surprised. He and others have commented on the amount of obedience displayed. They really couldn't believe their own findings. And to tell you the truth, we should be a little horrified by it. So one of my questions would be to you is this. If you are a volunteer in such a setting, how do you think you would have reacted? Would you have pushed that button thinking that you were harming another? As I think it, about it myself, I'm hopeful that I, I would have stopped after a while. In the war crimes trials that following World War II, so many Nazis were willing to do horrible things that it made many people wonder, was it something unique to Germans or was this something that many or most humans could do to other human beings? This experiment showed that most of us can lose our empathy rather easily, it seems. Now, last week I told you that I was going to comment on the gospel reading in which Jesus does not sound, well, very much like Jesus. Not like the Jesus we have come to know. In Matthew 15, Jesus tries to ignore this persistent Gentile woman. Then when she persists, he tells her politely that he was sent only to the Jews, the house of Israel. But then when she keeps on, he responds with what sounds like an insult. It's probably something that he heard many times from fellow Jews, maybe even from his disciples. It was probably the way many first century Jews felt and talked about foreigners in those days. But this woman seems prepared for this slur, and she comes back at Jesus with one more argument, and something happens to Jesus. I believe that in this interaction, Jesus finally sees her as a human being. Before, I think he was tired, irritable. He was tempted to ignore her. But finally, he hears her concern, realizes that she is right, and does what she asks. She didn't just win an argument. She actually got Jesus to see her humanity, to see her as a sister. I think we could see this story as another temptation story. Jesus was tempted to give in to prejudice, but he didn't. And so Jesus is, is the one who passes the test. Now I connect my opening story with the story of this Canaanite woman and today's story of answering the question, who is Jesus? Who do we say that Jesus is? Of course, like St. Peter, we answer that he is the Messiah, the Anointed One. But the question for us is this. Who is Jesus in our daily lives? Who do we say that Jesus is for us today? I think it can be helpful at times in our world today to use different words than Messiah. Oh, we can use these words with each other. But out there right now, one way to describe who Jesus is to, is to say that he is the Lord who sees and hears people. For there are lots of people who don't feel seen or heard or respected. In last week's Gospel reading, Jesus saw a woman who was often ignored. And at first, Jesus tried to do the same. 
Then he told her that she was not part of his tribe, and then he emphasized that with an insult. But in the end, he saw her, and what he saw was a person who had great faith. So, if you are a person who feels lost or abandoned or ignored, if you are a person who feels as if no one cares or if you have been insulted or disregarded, I can tell you this, Jesus sees you. He is the Messiah who hears you and loves you and heals you. And further, Jesus is the Messiah who sees all of us, no matter how awful we feel, no matter who we are. Jesus is the Messiah who hears us, even if all the world has shut us out. So who is Jesus for us? Of course, he is the Messiah. He's also the Son of God. He's the one who takes away our sins and the sin of the world. He is the one who has come to bring in the kingdom. But Jesus is also the Messiah who pays attention to each of us. And Jesus pays attention to us so that we can then go forward and be like him. We can go forward and listen to others, pray for others, pray with others, and see our Lord Jesus in each and every one. In other words, Jesus is the Messiah who helps us to be human with each other and humane to each other. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Glory to you, Lord God, Heavenly King, we worship you and we praise you for your glory. You alone are holy, awesome, and mighty. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O oh God, we thank you for sending Jesus, who brings us hope. We thank you for all blessings for life and love, purpose and faith, and all that we need. And then help us to share our blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Precious Jesus, we pray for all young people. 
families, administrators, and teachers, preparing for a new and different school year. Comfort them, O Lord, and lead us to help as we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, today we pray for the 22 million who have been infected with COVID-19 and more than 750,000 who have died. Help us not to become numb to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we pray for our brothers and sisters at Zion Lutheran Church in Valley City and Pastor Jim Watson and those at St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Pastor Bill Dean and Deacon Lindsay Bailey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, Lord, to sort out the issues that confront us, including how to bring safety and dignity to all people. We thank you for those who work to protect and serve with honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that your spirit may move every heart, that the barriers dividing us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatred cease, and that we might live in justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, we ask that you also spare us from war and violence, from floods and drought, from earthquake and storm. Spare us from corruption, tyranny, and authoritarianism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for our nation as we come to this election. We believe that democracy aligns with your will. And so may the will of the people be your will, and may the people prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And almighty creator, we pray for those responding to this pandemic. We pray for all who work among the sick. Give them strength, and may we pull together to endure and thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for those who struggle with food or shelter or depression, and help us to support our schools, agencies, media, and all who help to make this world better. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, oh, oh holy triune God, we pray for our members and friends, those who are away from us, those who feel isolated, and all who are on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And risen Christ, we pray for those who are grieving, especially those whose grief is new. Comfort them, O Lord, and help us to reach out to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.